Hello, and welcome to the Fireside Chat on Crushing Classical, Redefining a Thriving Classical Music Career. I'm Tracy Friedlander, and I'm so happy you're joining us for this chat. Today, Eileen and I dove into the topic of branding yourself, what that means, and how to start specifically on Facebook. The people in the business world use Facebook a lot differently than musicians, and so some of this stuff could really be new to you. We talked about the annoying aspects of Facebook and how to make it work for you, how you can actually make Facebook enjoyable, informative, educational, and less of a waste of time, and how to use it to build your online persona, who you are, essentially your brand, and why starting this as soon as possible is of the utmost importance. So I know you're going to enjoy this episode, so let's get started. Okay. Hey, Eileen, how are you today? Good. How are you? Great. Okay. We've just been talking for like 40 minutes about what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. This is so great. Um, so yesterday, Eileen and I, well, for the last couple of days, we've been talking about um, Facebook and just personal branding. I don't, there was someone made a post that Eileen follows and it was all about um, personal branding and how to get more people to see your page. And, you know, I'm always talking about this and trying to figure out it, it out for crushing classical. And then there was a live video, um, through what was that? It was, it was on that page and then it was through some agency or something like that. Yeah, right. It was, it was. And so, yeah, I mean, and I think it was, you know, I th here's, a, here's one thing I want to say about this. Um, there are, there are so many people that are telling you how to do Facebook or telling you how to do Twitter telling you mm -hmm. how to do Instagram. I just want to point something out about it, which is um, be careful who you follow because not everybody knows what they're talking about. I mean, right. really, they don't know. It's it's one thing to proclaim to be a Facebook expert or a personal branding expert or whatever. It's another thing to actually be one. And one of the things that um, I you know, pride myself on, I guess you could say, is finding who those people are, who the real people are and following them. Um, yeah. Right. I mean, like you, I, I mean, how many posts have I shared with you? You know that I'm, you know, I, I'm you are very at good at it. I, yeah. I'm, I'm very good at finding, I'm very good at picking out who the, you know, who the smart people are. And it's only because you've been doing this for so long. So when you and I, when, when we first started talking about what I could do with, um, First, it was Horn Wise, then Crushing Classical. Mm -hmm. um, you said, follow, these are the people I've discovered that are the legit real thing. They're not, you know, they're not, because there's a lot of people out there saying, oh, I'm an expert marketer. I'm an expert. Here's how you do this. Here's yep. how you market yourself. Here's how you this, yep. you know, and you can't just listen to any, you can't, anyone, because there's 5,000 of them saying yeah. something different. There are, and, and, and here's what I'll say about it too, is a lot of the best people, believe it or not, they're not always that visible. Interesting. They're not. So like the guy that we found out about this Facebook live through, he is like, he's well known in the advertising media buying circles. But as far as the internet marketing, online marketing, personal branding, uh, social media, advertising world he's really not that famous he, right like, you, you would not i only found him because i follow people i followed people and i i look at comments i read the comments and i find you know like somebody will, somebody will put up a post and say hey i'm looking for somebody for this is exactly how i found him exact th that guy how i found him was um justin put up a post that said uh justin's a guy i follow Justin put up a post that said, I'm looking for a guy who can help me with native advertising. And he was very specific about what he was looking for. And I, I immediately watched that thread because I knew that he would get, and, and he was saying, I'm willing to pay. It was some ridiculous amount of money per month for this, you know, for this, to get this person to work for him. Wow. And, um, and I thought, oh, he's going to get some killer names out of this. I just know it. And so I immediately turned the notifications on for that post because I wanted to see who people recommended. I ended up following three people that have been gold. And one of them was the guy from the Facebook live yesterday. Wow. Did he volunteer for the job or, or did um, he I, just recommend I something? I think he's probably doing some consulting with him. I don't know, but, but I, I'm going to tell you ever since I followed him and, and everybody said like, this is the guy I, I ended up following him. I'm so glad that I did because I've gotten more from, I mean, seriously, I followed the guy three weeks ago. Like it's been not, not long at all. 
And ever since then, I've gotten gold from his feet. I know. And actually, you shared that post with me a few days ago, and I thought, are you holding out on me? Like, where is this (laughs) this guy? I know. And and actually, you should be asking that question because the answer is yes. Uh, (laughs) It is. I mean, the answer is yes. I I am constantly looking for the smartest, brightest, um, most, and also the people who are the most generous. I want them to be smart, bright, uh, capable proven like they're they have a track record of something but also they're generous they give and that's what this guy is and and but i have so many people in my feed that are like that they're i'm looking for the generous i'm looking for the generosity because they're all this information there's plenty for all of us you know okay what I, mean? I love that and i want to speak to something uh, really quickly because i know how you use facebook and how most people do not because yeah. when you know there's if you let Facebook decide how you use Facebook, oh, you're screwed. Yeah, so you're gonna hate it. You'll hate Facebook. You'll hate Facebook. You'll how hate many it. people? I when I first started talking to Eileen again, I was like, I hate Facebook. Facebook's a waste of time. Fuck Facebook. Yeah. You know, every time I go on there, I see people's stupid posts about I what they're that doing. All the time. I hear still hear that from people, not just you. Right. And so, tell me, um, why are you getting so much value out of Facebook? <laughs> like, how? Yeah. So, How is that? so there's a couple things. First of all, um, I have, you know, a certain number for, I don't even have that many friends and I don't care how many friends I have. That's not a concern for me. Um, Facebook is a, is something I use for myself. It's not something, you know, I, I use it as a tool for myself um, and, and for my business. So um, I, I unfollowed everybody. First of all, that's the first step is you have to unfollow everybody. You have to unfollow your friends. Um, you can create, they have this uh, feature called friend list. You'll see it on the left-hand side when you oh, did log they bring in. that back? Well, no, it's not interest list. It's just friend list. Oh, okay, okay. So they used to have this thing called interest list, and that was my favorite, but they, they don't have that anymore. They got rid of that feature because nobody was using it. Foolishly, nobody was using it. It was the best <laughs> feature. But uh, so they have this thing called friends list. And so it's on the left-hand side. You'll see it. It's a, you know, if you click into it, you're going to see a bunch of, you can, you know, put your friends into categories. So I have a category for friends that are just people I know in real life or that I knew from school, like, you know, they're friends, like I know them in person, you know, they're not business associates. They're just friends, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Then I have another, another category called contacts. Contacts are people I don't know in real life. They connected to me for whatever reason, probably trying to build their network on Facebook, but they're, I, I consider them for business because I don't, we don't know each other personally. I mean, I don't know their dog's name or anything like that. I don't know how many kids they have. I don't know. They're, they're just people who connected to me on Facebook or I connected with them. Um, you really have to, you have to manage your newsfeed. I'm very, very particular about what I put in my newsfeed. So I unfollowed all of my friends. If I want to go see them, I go into that friend list called friends and I just scroll that feed. So, and that's what you can do with friend lists is you can go on the left, you can click on friend list. You can go into your friends. Again, you have to categorize everybody. But then you can just in that one feed, you can see all of your friends and I can catch up on all their their news. But I only go in there like once every two weeks or so. That's as much as I go in there because my friends are not going to help me that like me reading about their day or their dog or how they, you know, missed an appointment or whatever stuff they post on on uh, on Facebook is not going to help me with my business. And that's Mm -hmm. really what I understand. Facebook is a social tool, but you have to decide what social is for you. In other words, are you using it for what, for your entertainment? Are you using it for business, which is what I'm using it for? Um, Using it to stay in touch with people. What are you using it for? If you have a, you have to decide what your purpose is because you you cannot have a news feed that's jam packed with your friends updates if you're trying to build either a presence, um, a brand for yourself, a business, um, any any sort of venture. Like if you want to actually make money from it, you you can't just have a news feed that's clogged with stuff that's not going to forward that intention. Exactly. Does that make it's- sense? So you have to like control your feed. Right. And so in your feed, do you use that see it first um, capability? I do. Okay. I do. So I do use see first, the capability called see first. If you don't know how to do that, you can just Google it. 
you know, how to use C first on Facebook. You can just Google that. Yeah. Cause you could use that on crushing classical. So you don't ever miss a post, exactly. you know, you could. Exactly. That's what I do with crushing classical now is I have crushing classical on C first and I have your personal profile, Tracy Friedlander on C first as well, because I want to see what you're posting. Uh -huh. um, and I don't, I don't want to miss it. And I don't want to miss comments either that people are making. I'll tell you um, something else I recently turned off. I turned off when someone tags me in a picture or a photo or or a post. I turned off that it ends up on my on my my profile. That's what I did too. So I don't let anybody post to my profile without like they, in other words if they post a picture of me from and this has happened from you know high school or whatever um I don't necessarily want to be tagged in that. Yeah. I, I really don't. And so I get notified. That's a privacy setting, so I get notified just like you do. Yeah. If somebody tagged me in a post and then I'll go review it and see if I want to add it to my timeline. Exactly. You can have really a choice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, but you have to, you have to actually, I hate to use this word, but you have to rig Facebook to work in your favor, but you have to decide what your intention or your purpose is there before you can do that. Mm -hmm. That's where it begins. You really have to start there. Totally. Yeah. So that's, that's a good place to start with the Facebook talk, because I think most people in general, especially outside of the business world, they are not using Facebook in that way. They're using it to keep in touch. They're using it because that they have been for the last, you know, however long it's on their, on their phone. So you can go on there and see what people are doing. But most of the time I just hear people are annoyed with it. Yeah. So yeah. people are annoyed with it because they haven't, because they're living at the effect of it instead of making it work for them. But you have to have a, seriously, you have to start thinking strategically. If you want something to work for you, you have to think through, okay, what's my intention here? And, you know, look, look, this isn't about whether you're going to hurt anybody's feelings by not following their updates. Um, I'm sure people notice that I don't, my friends, I'm sure they notice that I don't comment on their posts. Well, they've already figured out that I'm not following them. Uh, you know, it's no secret. Yeah. It's not a state secret. And I don't actually care if they are bothered by that or what. If they don't like that, they can unfriend me. It's not my job to follow them. I need to use Facebook in a way that works for me. And that's what you have to decide is how right. you want to use it. You know? Because it can be used for really important things for your career. And yeah. so, so yeah, I mean, and that's a lot what we're of... going to talk. We're going to talk a little bit about that today as well. That's what I want to talk about next. So, and I used Facebook. Actually, this was the way that I found so many of the people that I have interviewed on Crushing Classical yep. and I get to see what people are up to. You know, Instagram is great too. I love Instagram. Instagram's great. Yep. But face, you know, they, they really work well together they do. because on Facebook, you can watch longer videos. It's mm -hmm. just a, a bigger. And also the comments are a lot long. People leave yes. more, you know, they leave beefy comments on Facebook. That's what I like about Facebook. I, yeah. I don't, I don't love Facebook as a platform really, but there are certain things that are valuable and the most valuable thing is the comments actually. I mean, yeah. that's where I found the best people to follow by the way is in the comments. That's where the magic is. I was telling Tracy this the other day. If you're not reading comments, you're a fool. That's where the magic is. You can find out what people care about, what they hate, what they love, what they're passionate about. If you want to know what people want, read comments. What did you say to me yesterday? Um co the post is for what people what what you want people to think that you think or yeah. how you are or whatever. And the yeah. comments are where the people, where reality comes out, where people who, yeah. you know, like who they really are comes who out. They really are. So, the, the, so uh, I said something like this. I said the posts, when somebody posts, they're, they, they're trying to get you to believe this is who they are. Mm -hmm. And when they comment, they're telling you who they really are. <laughs> I love that. If you just look, it's really true. It's well, really and true. a really great example is that that post that was um, somebody I don't know who it was said, "I really." The post said, "I really should start eating better." Oh yeah, that was it. Yeah, and then yeah. the comments were like really funny, like um, hilarious. Yeah, and the person who posted it actually. You know, anytime someone answered in a serious way, like actually you could try this diet or try eating whole foods and da da, da um, they were ignored, either ignored or uh, rudely replied. To. Yeah, made fun of. <laughs> were made Absolutely. fun of, exactly. Yeah. And what was really interesting, all the guy said, seriously, in the post, all he wrote was, I really need to start eating better. I think that was the post. That was really it. Need, and by the way, I don't even know who the guy is. He's not a friend of mine. You know how when a post shows up in your feed because your friend liked it? Yeah. 
that's the that's the only reason why I saw it. And so, and of course, I sent it over to you because I wanted you to see the comments, the, the the comments because they were hysterical. I mean, it, it truly is the you know the way Americans feel about food was completely written out in that, in those comments. Yeah, the guy was the guy was probably feeling guilty for eating like an exorbitant amount of food that was terrible sure, for he him. Probably, yeah, he probably ate like thirty five hundred calories in a meal and decided to post that on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, but you the know? truth was, is that <laughs> once it digested halfway, he was going to feel better and go back for it again. Yeah, he, he did a hot fudge Sunday that after that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but this is what this is what it is, and I mean, really. And one of the comments, by the way, and I and I thought it was so brilliant. This is what I mean by people tell you who they really are. One person wrote, "I should too, but I know I won't." Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, if that's not the human condition, I don't know what is. Yeah, and, and that's then what, that's a beautiful thing about comments is you see humanity, like real life humanity. Yeah. And you see, one one person wrote in who happens to have some kind of business about whole food eating or something had a challenge. You join the challenge. We'll oh, give yeah, you a hundred yeah, yeah. bucks. I know. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. yeah and, and that was that comment was 100 percent ignored. Mm -hmm. And then a little further down, someone wrote, um, oh, people didn't, even, I, people didn't even like the post. Didn't even like it. Yeah. And oh. then further down, um, somebody said something like, I can't remember exactly what she said, but then the guy commented to that woman and said, are you trying to manipulate me to eat healthier? <laughs> I know. Right. And I, and of course I think she was being sarcastic in that yeah. comment, but, but I thought to myself, gosh, you know, we're, it, it's so interesting that you can really see the differing views on food. You yeah. can see them, you know? Yeah. And that's, what's so great about the comments. So Seriously, if you're not looking at comments, you're just you're missing the true experience of Facebook because that's where I find in case you're wondering, where do I find all the best people? That's where I find them. I find great people to follow and then I read comments and I find more great people to follow. Yeah. That's where I find And them. you can follow anybody and not be their friend. Exactly. And I do it a lot, by the way. There's a lot of people I'm following that I'm not even friends with. I just want to see what they're about, what they post, whatever. That's and here's the other thing that's cool. Um, business pages or, you know, Facebook pages, not your profile, but the pages you can follow instead of like, which I think is fascinating that you can do that. Interesting. Have you noticed so, that? Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah. So when you go to a page, mo I mean, I, I've seen it on almost every page and I don't think there's, I mean, maybe there's a, a setting that you can make it so that people can follow you or like the page. They don't have to do both. Um, but I think it's interesting now that pages are offering that option. You can like the page, you can follow the page, both. You can do both. You can do neither. You can do either one. Okay. So yeah. if you follow some somebody, then it's not shown in your feed that you like them, but you still see their posts. Correct. And if you like them, but you don't follow them, you're not going to see their posts. Correct. You can like and follow. So like when you like the page, it gives you the option to follow them or not. I think it usually automatically puts that you, follow. I know does. that if, if I friend somebody, it automatically says I'm following. So it you does. Have... And you should know, like, and this is another tip for all of you, you know, if somebody friends you and let's say you don't know them or, you know, listen, a lot of people friend you because they were trying to expand their network. And I don't have a problem with that. Actually. I don't have a problem as long as they're not psycho. I don't have a problem with somebody friending me on Facebook that, you know, is just trying to follow me. But, um, but one thing you should know is if you do accept their friend request, the first thing you should do is unfollow them unless you're madly in love with what they're posting for real. Right. I'll tell you what I do is when somebody friends me, first thing I do is I scroll their feed. I mean, and I go pretty far down. I, 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 I scroll their last, let's say 20 to 30 posts. Oh, okay. I scroll and I go, do I want to follow this person? I, I'm serious. I make an instant, an instant decide. Like it's the decision right there. Do I want to follow? And, and if I see, if I see interesting things, in those 30 or 40 posts that I look at, seriously, it's, it's quite a few posts. I scroll quite a bit. Um, if I see stuff I like and I go, this person is, I really like what they're doing. This is interesting. Then I'll follow them right there. If, if I don't, they get unfollowed immediately, even if I friended them. Yes. And they get categorized in, into a list, like I was talking about earlier. Yeah, so that's I, very I, organized. It is. It's very. And, and I'm going to tell you, I don't friend people until I'm in a spot where I can like do that at scroll, the follower unfollow, and then the categorize. So I, I friend requests wait until I have time to do all of that work in one sitting. Mm -hmm. Otherwise I won't do it. 
Because if, if I friend somebody without categorizing them, I'll just forget. Right. And now they're in my feed. And I've done that. And I'm like, feed. who is this? I can't do it. I know. I've done it too. I've done it too. And that's why I decided I wasn't going to do that anymore because it mucks up my feed. Right. I don't, I don't, that's the biggest thing is I have to have control over my feed. Otherwise Facebook is not useful. It becomes that thing you were talking about earlier, which is, I don't want to be on Facebook. This is awful. A waste yeah, of time. I'm quitting Facebook. I'm taking yeah, a quitting, hiatus from Facebook. I'm taking a hiatus from Facebook. Yeah. It's yeah. because you're not managing your feed. That's the only right. reason why it's not working. Right. So, so this Facebook live was, um, kind of past that, assuming that people kind of generally or maybe not. It wasn't really talking about that. The Facebook Live was going straight to um, personal branding and having a public figure page. And we were, we've been talking about this because when we started watching the live, both you and I weren't, you know, we were watching it on our own, in our own cities. You're in Phoenix and I'm in yeah. Raleigh. And <laughs> we were both thinking the same thing. Oh my God, musicians need to do this. If you're yeah. in an orchestra, yep. you need, no matter if you're an orchestra, if you're a freelancer, if you're whatever, you don't know what's what's in store for your career. And, yep. and you need a public figure page that you have, you know, information about yourself and whatever else you want to put. And we were talking about this because we were talking about crushing classical and how, you know, that's the page for the podcast, but now already we have this evolution happening with crushing classical. It started out as an interview podcast and now we have fireside chats and we have hot seats and Eileen is working here and there's all these different things. And we're going, what's this going to look like in a year? What's this going to look like in two years? Um, and so we're, we're ta taking the advice to have our own pages in addition to the crushing classical page. And let's talk more about why that, that is important. What do you think? Yeah. So, um, there's a couple things. So you might, and you know, this is probably a little bit of a foreign idea, but there, and there's, there's more we're going to say about this here, but this whole idea. So a public figure page is like, um, you know, you've got your personal profile mm -hmm. on Facebook and, and pretty much everybody has one. And you then can't, you can't have other pages on Facebook unless you have that first. Right. Exactly. You have to start with your personal profile, but then you can create a page and um, it can be, you know, like, let's say, let's just use you as an example. Let's just play. So yeah. let's say you, you created a public figure page, Tracy Friedlander, you know, horn, Tracy Friedlander, comma horn. I'm just making that up. Okay. Um, let's say, let's say that you're a classical musician and that's what you're, I mean, I know you are a musician, but I'm just using this as an example. Right. So let's just say that your, your, your full-time job is you're a freelancer or you're, you know, you're in an orchestra, whatever your deal is, and you decide that you're going to do a public figure page. And and mm -hmm. several musicians have done this. But I think what's interesting about this is a lot of people don't feel like they can create a public figure page until they're quote unquote famous. So until I get into the Chicago Symphony, until I get into the, you know, into a big uh, fancy chamber group, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Exactly. And, and then people that do have chamber groups, they have a chamber group page, but they right. don't have their page for themselves right. as if they're going to be in that chamber group forever and ever. What happens when, when, you know, and people are going to meet you and say, Oh, I, you know, I love, say you're in a brass quintet and you're the horn player or I'm the horn player, you know, like, so maybe I'm not going to be in that brass quintet after the next five years well, or whatever. I don't know. I mean, that's what's so interesting about that was, that's what was so interesting about this live that we saw yesterday was, you have to think about your brand as evolving and as uh, as you are a human being with multi, you've got multi opinions, multi interests. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you know, you may be a horn player, you may be a violin player, you may be a flute player, whatever it is, but you are not your instrument. And I think that's the mistake that classical musicians make is I am my instrument. I am only what I play. I'm only my music. And that's not who you are. And that's mm. what that's what we're talking about here is the purpose of a public figure page is to be everything you are, not just the instrument you play and the music you play. It's just, yes, I think the mistake that people make on Instagram, I see it a lot on Instagram and I know you do too, but also on Facebook, but especially on Instagram, because that's where I see the classical musicians after you've pointed them out to me mm -hmm. is the biggest thing they're doing is they're taking selfies with their instrument. They're taking, um, they're doing, uh, you know, maybe a, a one minute video of their practice session, something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Uh, I hate, I hate to say that, say this, but that, that only that that's going to get you about three seconds of attention. Mm -hmm. 
you're just not that interesting. Your, your playing and your instrument are just not that interesting. They're really not. Yeah. I mean, how many times are you going to scroll through and see that same person playing something on their you know, flute or whatever? Yeah. And you're like, okay, I, I saw that. And I just saw another person playing the flute too. And another person and like, yeah. you know, unless you're, and then, I don't know. Fa- and then they're getting fancy with it, Tracy. They're doing that whole, oh, I think I'll take my shirt off while I'm playing the violin. <laughs> oh, I think I'll wear four inch heels while playing the piano. Yeah. I think I'll, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll wear a dress that, you know, just comes down past, <laughs> you know, and you know what I mean? I, I think. Oh I'll my wear- God. I know. I was marveling at a woman the other day on, yeah. on Instagram, yeah. how, cl- how much boobs she was showing while yeah, she was I mean, seriously i think i'll get a breast enhancement and then show cleavage while i'm playing x instrument i mean that's that's as as um fancy as musicians have gotten you guys if that's if that's what you're seeing and that's who you are you guys are missing the boat there's so much more you have so much more to offer the world than what you're what you sound like as a player and what you look like as a human you have so much more to offer the world so much more and you know actually so right before we started this recording you used we we both said dub it my husband you know he's yeah. he let's he, use dub it as an example he's we have to use example. him he's yeah. a great example and he um we both thought of him when they were talking about personal branding because they were they were using it in the context of if you work for a company and you just are you know someone who works at a company you might not think that you should have a public figure page because you just work in that company. But when you, someday you might leave that company and you might want to get a job or, you know, and they were using that as an example. Like this is your place. Like resumes are over. That's what they're saying in the business world. So I'm sorry if that, if that hasn't caught up to the music world, it will eventually. Yeah. Resumes are, I mean, really, truly, I, I, I actually agree with what they said yesterday. Resumes really are over. Yeah, they really are. And and if you don't, I think the hardest thing for someone trying to get a quote unquote job today, I mean, music or not, I think the hardest thing about getting a job just in the regular world is that if you're not, if they can't find you and you're not influencing in some way, or you're not creating some kind of platform for yourself, you disappear. You're invisible. Yes. And I just, we're going to talk about David right now, but I just thought of someone else that I thought of while they were <laughs> doing this and I didn't write it down, but I thought of it and then thought of it a couple times. So I just thought of it now. There's this horn player that I know that I have to tell you the story about him. Okay. Remember to remind me his name's his, uh, I should change his name to protect his innocence. Yeah. Yeah. Change his name but, because, you know, we don't want to talk about him because he's not here to defend himself. Right. Well, he's, right? He, I was only going to say good things and I, I won't mention it. I won't say his actual name. Okay. I'll, I'll call him Bill. Okay. But anyway, Bill, I have to tell you about Bill because it remind the personal branding outside of social media applies to this guy in so many ways. And, okay, I, I, and wanna... I, I just, I just took a note so that we can, so I'll, I'll remember to talk to you about it later. Okay, great. So, so Eileen and I both thought of David because he is through and through a violinist. Like he loves the violin. Hardcore. He loves hardcore, loves everything about the violin. Like I'll come back to the computer after he's been on it. And there's um, a, an image of a frog, you know, the bottom of a bow yeah. zoomed in. So you can see all the details of the frog or the tip or something like that. Like serious? he's, wow. and we call it violin porn. He's like obsessed with, you know, the beauty of this French violin or this French bow. No, wow. Italian, but it's Italian violins and French bows, according I really to him. Had no, I seriously had no idea he was that obsessed with it. I didn't obsessed. Know. Like to the point where I'm like, dude, don't talk to me about it. Really <laughs> don't. You know, and my friends used to laugh at me because I knew so much, you know, string player friends of mine. Um, I would say, yeah, well, you know, I don't, I like the, you know, he'd been trying out bows and I'm like, I don't really like the, uh, you know, the, the Sartori as much as the, this or that. They're like, you're a horn player. Why do you know these names? And I'm like, oh, don't get me started. You know, because I'm Uh, married, I'm married to the violin porn star. Yeah, exactly. So, but he's not, you know, we experienced audition X factor together Mm -hmm. and I saw that this, this husband of mine, you know, he's Not great at playing the violin. He loves it. He loves talking to people. He loves talking. He loves it. But just doing this kind of like in and out work of, you know, organizing stuff and figuring out Logistical. who to call. He's just not, he's not a logistics guy. Logistics and details, forget it. So, yeah, so we learned a lot about, about what, what kind of business he wouldn't, wouldn't do for sure. Right, right. So, but we're thinking about this, like, okay, he's, he's 
he's a associate concert master. Lots of people know who he is in this town. Um, he gets lots of solo opportunities um, in locally, and he doesn't have um, his own public figure page. People can people can maybe find him on Facebook, but I'm sure his his profile is not public. And you know, he just doesn't spend a lot of he hasn't spent a lot of time, you know. Yeah. On it. I mean, he and, he goes on, and mostly it's because he's playing the violin all the time. I mean, exactly, like, exactly, like totally. You know, the stuff is not. You know, he's the guy who hasn't updated his phone in three years or whatever. Not just, I'm just kidding, but like, <laughs> you know, he's not he's not f- figuring out this stuff, right? right? But we were talking about how, like, wow, if he had a f- public figure page, he has so many opinions about violins and bows, and how much value could this bring? to people who are looking, who don't care that much about it. Like I know lots of violinists who could care less about, about equipment. And I'm, I'm one of those people with horn. Like I have had the same horn for, you know, 15, 20, you know, going on 20 years. Yeah. I love it. I'm not interested. I changed my mouthpiece, you know, 10 years ago. Um, I love I, it. And listen, I was the same as you as a player when I was playing clarinet. Um, as soon as I bought my horn, that was done for me. You know, yeah. like I, as soon as I bought, I, and of course you have two clarinets, usually sometimes three, uh, when you play clarinet, depending on, you know, what, what aspect of clarinet you play, B flat, A, and then E flat. But yeah. Um, so I had two, I had a B flat and an A, but the thing is when you, um, like I'm one of those people and you know, he's just an equipment junkie. He want he's always trying to get the best equipment. Once yep. I decided on a horn, I'm done. That's it. And mm-hmm. I never think about it again. And then I'm all about trying to improve my tone, whatever, whatever. I, I, I really, I really never think about the instrument again. Right. And strings are a little different because so much of their sound is based on, I mean, the equipment, the equipment a little more so than say, you know, if something's going wrong with the horn, I'm like, what am I not doing right? But yeah, you know, every now and then, like, I'm, it's all about your breath support and yeah, like, and in clarinet, it's how you, you know, um, how you're holding it, you know, how you're covering the the finger holes and things like that, you know, how much, you know, how much air you're putting through it. Exactly. Um, your, your embouchure. There's so many things outside the clarinet that make the clarinet sound good that the, you know, the clarinet's only like a small piece of it. Right. But I'm sure there's lots of clarinetists who are like, Oh, I want to, I want to collect barrels and I want to like try a million. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah absolutely. And total barrel junkies and mouthpiece junkies and ligature yeah, yeah. junkies and reed junkies. And absolutely. Right. I so like that person. Yep. Right, exactly. And so there's lots of people that have different opinions about stuff like this. And David's done so much research, you know, so not only is he a violinist who could potentially play a chamber concert or a solo or whatever, and be hired by some group who's looking for information about him, but he can also be on there and talking about his opinions about the way this stuff is sold. Like, well, I know that he has lots of opinions about the old fashioned way of buying and selling violins and bows through these fancy shops and everything else and right. the commissions. In fact, and in fact, and we were talking about just, just before the call, I said, I said to Tracy, you know, if he wanted to, he could reinvent how violins are sold. There's an old school way that they're sold right now. He could literally, if he wanted to, I'm not saying he has to, but he could, if he wanted to reinvent the way violins are sold and how you do that as you start a conversation about it. But even mm-hmm. more than that, here's another thing he can do that I want to add to it. And again, you know, here's Eileen always thinking about profit. <laughs> so, but here's the thing, like he also sells violins and he sells bows. Mm-hmm. So the other thing is, you know, if he becomes an expert and he is an expert, I would say already, he is yeah. one, you know, if he becomes a public expert on violin buying and selling and whatever, who wouldn't want to buy a violin and a bow from him? Who wouldn't want to? I know. Does that make sense? Like, do you know what that could, do you know what that public figure page could do? Like, do you have any idea what it could do? Because you know he's a great player. A lot of times you buy violins and bows from people who aren't really necessarily players. They don't even play. Yeah. You know, they run a shop. Here he is telling you, right. He could be telling you what's good and bad about certain bows. And he knows, he knows it's so crazy. Like he, and you know, this bow has, you know, a heavier stick, so it could give you wrist problems, but once you adjust to it, it's going to get you a richer sound on the G string. I I just pulled that out of my butt. You know, I don't, right. And I I don't even know how you know that language, but okay. Right. Exactly. You know, exactly. Um, but no, seriously, (laughs) I I totally agree with you. I completely, I I get what you're saying. It's, it's 100% that way. And yeah, so I, there's so much you can do with a public figure page is the point. Like, and it's actually not, pretty exciting. It I is. think you it's know, really he's exciting. He's not just a violinist. He's so much more. I mean, 
when I came to visit you last year, I mean, I remember uh, how many opinions he had about, <laughs> oh, I mean, all different things, like all different, even, you know, especially the reason why we started the whole audition X Factor conversation was because he has very specific um, opinions on auditioning. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the, he's been very successful with auditions in his life very successful yeah. and if there if there's one person you should hear from and could hear from and I, I think he had a failure or two in there that taught him something as well yeah. oh, I don't yeah, think he, he, did. he didn't win every audition but and he I think he lost a major one or two didn't he you know he came extraordinarily close to winning a couple okay of them like but where he was the last few standing and for Pittsburgh he was he was the final two and and it was political you know it was one of those things where you know the conductor wanted one person and the committee wanted him according to what he had heard and you know just different things happen like that sometimes yeah you know and um so that's what happened and he didn't get it which you know what if he would have gotten that job we never would have met and you know True. everything True. else so there's reasons for everything and you know Life now what well, life works out. Yeah, exactly. And stuff happens. But, you know, it's not always you didn't win the job because you weren't qualified, you know, right. sometimes. But, and that, so that those are the hardest losses to to bear, you know. And then he had, you know, he had a situation where he'd, he'd advanced and gotten to the finals in Chicago a few times. And one of the times, you know, Muti got sick the last time. Muti got sick. And, and so the, the final was supposed to be a month later. And then it was six months later. So he like he had this pending final audition that was not in for another six months so can you imagine like that just being out there on the timeline like yeah that's a long that's a really long time drawn out, out. Yeah. yeah and but i mean the cool thing about this you have to think about you are not yes you're a player so let's say you're a classical musician right now listening to this you are a player and but there's you are so much more than that you are right you know like we were look audition x factor didn't work out for david to continue doing that but he is, you know, we're thinking about this, this we were talking about this morning, my gosh, you know, he could, he could easily talk about violins, bows, um, his passion for that. He can talk about chamber music. I know he loves doing that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he can talk about, there's so many different aspects of Dovet and people would love to follow him. You know, people who are violin junkies, uh, love violin porn like he does, absolutely would follow Dovet. No yeah, question. he can put um, those zoomed up pictures on his profile on his page. <laughs> they go, oh, look at this bow! It's so fabulous. Look, you know? <laughs> and and then other people can ogle it just like he does. You know, yeah. I think I think you, um, I think you're missing out on so much of building. You know, this whole idea of building your brand. I think that's what really they drove home yesterday in the in the Facebook Live we were on is that building your brand is about all of the facets that you are. It's not just one thing. Mm -hmm. and, totally. And, and you have no idea what that could do for you in a social world. You don't know what the possibility of that is building for you in a social world because that, and we're getting more social. It's not getting less social. It's getting more. Exactly. And so, um, one thing I'm going to bring up, um, Bill, cause yeah. this is perfect moment for this. Um, so we were talking about, um, or they were talking about now keep in mind, you know, this is important for you to have your social thing, but this isn't your personal brand is also who you are outside of the social networks, obviously, like in just your personal relationships and outside in the community and everything. And, and then they, they said the thing about the resume and I was thinking about it, you know, I was thinking about when somebody wants you know, oftentimes in the classical world, a situation will occur where they need some player, they need a player to do something and there's no time for an audition. You know, someone left abruptly and they got another job and they left immediately or this or that. And we need some, we need to fill this position now. And who are we going to get? Mm -hmm. And so this, this happens a lot. And oftentimes the, it's not about the resume, but it's about who says that this person, you know, who can vouch for this person essentially. Sure. Sure. And so like, as you build your, your personal brand online and you connect with people, that's one way of starting to do it. And so this person, Bill, I'm thinking of this is, and he built this way before social. And I don't even think he's very social on, on any of these networks, uh, Facebook or anything. I don't 
I know I'm friends with him, but I never see anything from him. But um, he is just, he's just known like in the world that you can count on him to be a solid player, you know, and he has stepped in in so many different situations over the years. And I always marveled at it. Like, dude, you know, he's never, he never has to take auditions for this stuff yet. He has created this career and eventually he did get his own position and, and he's there now, but like over the course of like a big, huge chunk of his career was just playing one year positions and bouncing around doing different things, um, filling in because Anytime anyone needed somebody, they're like, we love this guy. He's a great player. He's fun. He has tons of friends. Everybody knows him. Every If you don't know him personally, you know 10 people who think he's he's a great player and wow. can vouch for him and, and definitely know that he's easy to work with. He's a fun person to be with. He, you know, everything else. Like he's somebody you would want there. And have so that- ever, Have you ever considered um, interviewing him for the podcast? No, not really, but that that would be a good idea. It might be interesting to interview him because he probably there, there, I could be wrong. I mean, you can you can check with him and see, but he may be an interesting interview because he may have a philosophy that has allowed him to to do that. That's a good point. You know what I mean? Like there's some philosophy, I mean, I I'm not saying he has one, but I'm guessing he probably does because it's unusual for somebody to be that um sought after someone who doesn't even have somebody who didn't even have a job exactly and he you didn't I mean? get a job till later you know much later in his career yep. yet he's so known like i think everybody that i know knows him yeah I and mean, everyone he, and every time you really say it yeah he could be a really interesting interview right he could be and every time that anyone says oh yeah you do know him oh yeah i love him he's the best you know yeah like and sure, you know, there's tons of horn players who could do that, who could fill oh, in and do a good job, right? right? But you go for the person who is, you know, you can count on it. Right. In and, so and many question, ways. And the question is, how has he been able to be that consistent? I think that's what's so interesting about someone like that is it's not even just being a great guy. Obviously, being a great guy has contributed to it, but you wouldn't mm -hmm. recommend him if he was a crappy player. Exactly. So there's, there's something about like his ability to remain consistent. How has he been able to do that? How has he been so consistent as a performer, as a player, whatever, what are his, you know, preparation uh, techniques? What are, how does he think about it? How does mm -hmm. he think about preparation? How does he think about, how was he thinking about his career at that time? You know, before he got a job, how was he thinking about his career at that time? I, I'd really be interested in his, you know, what his view was. I'd like to know how he made so many contacts. Yeah. Great. I mean, that, that would be really interesting. So anyway, just something yeah. to consider to, to think about. But I, I, he was the first person I thought when we were, t we're thinking about your network and just yep. how resume in that situation did not matter. Certainly like, yeah, okay, this guy, he's played here and here and here. And that, yeah. that shows that he's good. But what, what about, what, what does that speak to that that he's been asked to do all these things without an audition? Right. You know? That's what's so fascinating about it, I think. Yeah. And I and I think that would be interesting to ask him about. Like what would he have to say about that? Right. You know? And I'm sure he has an opinion about it. I can't imagine he doesn't. I, he's he's probably not going to get on a call with you and go, "I was lucky." <laughs> no, I know. I don't think he will. I mean, I, he could, but I don't think he would say that. You know? That's a good point. I would like to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pursue this and get on a phone call with him and see. Yeah. I mean, you might as well check into it. Right. But, but yeah. I think, but I think that's what, you know, I, I hope everybody, I hope you're all taking away what the value it's not about. It's not even so much about being liked, even though this guy she's talking about bill, you know, he's liked it's that you, there's so many aspects of why someone's going to hire you, why someone's going to be attracted to following you, listening to you, hanging mm -hmm. on your every word, buying things from you. There, yeah. There's so much, and, and it's so much more than just how you play. I think so much of classical music has been focused on how well you play. And I think the evolution of classical music is not just how well you play, but what you have to say about it. And yes. what you have to contribute to the community beyond your playing, believe it or not, there is more to you. The opinions you have, I mean, Gosh, you know, we were talking about it, Tracy, you know, when I, I started playing when I was, I don't know, seven years old, 
Mm -hmm. By the time I was 17, 18, Mm -hmm. if you sat me down, you could have easily interviewed me. I would have had a ton of things to say about Mm -hmm. auditioning, about teaching, because I had been teaching for like four years at that point. Um, Even as a, even in high school, I was teaching, you know. You were teaching Um, beginners probably. I was teaching beginner. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, like I actually had fully formed opinions about, um, you know, auditions, winning and losing, um, you know, uh, different aspects of the instrument. You know what I mean? You did too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, you did. And I think we forget you are so much more than you're playing. You're so much more than that. And I think you, so, so many people make a mistake of only, you only value yourself for how well you play. Guys, come on. Mm-hmm. That's not just, that's not who you are. You're right. so much more than that. And that's what a public figure page can do for you. Yeah. And, you know, I would, as, as we're talking about the public figure thing, and I'm thinking about, you know, CEOs of orchestras and how, yeah. and, and how an orchestra has an orchestra page and an orchestra is made up of like, 60 to 100 players, plus the people who run the stage, plus people who um, are the managers Mm -hmm. and the fundraisers and these and that and all these all the way up to the, you know, the president or what it's CEO or whatever you call them. That's a whole lot of players. And then and then you've got this Facebook page just for, you know, the yada yada symphony. And Mm -hmm. it's not it's not on the level of social that's happening anymore. People want to People want that one-on-one. You know, there's some people that I follow um, that you've told me to follow in the business world that I literally feel like I actually know. I know. I feel like they're like my friend. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> it's very weird. And it makes me want to follow more. It makes me want to know what they're going to do next, mm-hmm. even if it has nothing to do with what I'm doing. Yep. If it's completely a different kind of thing, I still want to know what they're doing. Cause I feel like I know them. They're my friend. If you're following a group, if you're following like a chamber orchestra or an orchestra, who is that? You know? Yep. And it's even more interesting to, to follow, let's say the founder of something. So if, you know, the founder yeah. of a chamber group or the, like, the president of an orchestra, the executive director of an orchestra, yeah. or whatever they call themselves. Um, yeah. You know, because, because philosophically, I mean, at the end of the day, what a lot of people end up being most interested in is philosophy. What is your, Mm -hmm. you know, what do you stand for? The why, the why, why, you know, why, why do you exist? What are you trying? What are you working on right now? What are you trying to create right now? It's the, it's the process that people, I mean, is the, is the, is the you know result nice to know about? Yes, but it's even more interesting to watch the process of something. Oh, totally, totally. And that's what I think a founder of a chamber group can create in a public figure page. That's what I think a executive director or president of an orchestra can create. I think I really do think that you know. And also, here's another thing: the the executive director or president of an orchestra. Look, those jobs are fickle. Mm-hmm. You know, you can. You can win and lose at those jobs. So if, you know, let's say if you're no longer, let's say you lose your job as an executive director or whatever, if you have a public figure page, you've got a body of work Mm -hmm. that's public. Yeah. So that when you go and apply or try and get another job, you've got a body of work people can look at. They can find out who you are. Um, They wouldn't be able to do that if you weren't creating that publicly. Exactly. Which is possible to do right now. Yeah. You know, I think that's the the real value of a public figure page. And and also there's the possibility of doing advertising, like using Facebook advertising to uh, monetize it or spread it further. Mm-hmm. You, can't, you can't do that on a profile. Um, and, you know, we're not going to get into the nitty gritty of that because that is a very technical yeah. topic. Uh, we're not going to get into that right now. But, but just know that that's another advantage of it is that you can pay to be seen. Right. And you can target the people who you want to see you. That's right. You can so that's so important, right? It is. It's, it's so, so important. So anyway, yeah, I just, I think this is, you know, I think it's critical. I think everybody needs to have one. And I don't care if it's just your name or if it's, you know, your name, comma, the instrument you play or, it, you know, your name, comma, musician, your name, comma, badass rock star violinist. I mean, whatever. I don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can decide what you call yourself. 
Right. And, you know, I have noticed that there, there are some people, um, several people uh, in some of these bigger chamber groups um, that have their own pages too. Mm-hmm. So like the bass player of this string trio has his own, you know, or whatever, yep. which is cool because there's probably a whole group of people who just, that's their favorite person in the group. Yeah. You know, absolutely. So, yeah. And I mean, it just, when we were talking earlier before the call and you were like, you know, you're so much more than the instrument you play. I really just want to drive that home that that is really the point. Mm -hmm. It is so the point in this is that that you really, you have so much more to bring to the table, so much more value that people want to know. Mm -hmm. They want to know who you are, not just what you play and how you sound. Mm -hmm. I know you think that's all, that's all people want to know, but you're really, you're really cheapening yourself. You're cheapening yourself. You're just, that's not, um, it's not even, a, it's not even like a 18th of what you are. Right. It's not even an 18th. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to make fun of people who just post pictures of themselves with their instruments or practicing or whatever, but that's mostly what I see. And I think to myself, gosh, you know, what a waste. Mm-hmm. It's a waste because there's, you have something to say. You, you you have so much more to say and you're not saying it. Why? Yeah. You have so much in your head that you say to people you know, but you don't say it out to the world. And people are missing out on your magic. Wow. You know, they're missing out on your magic. You are magical, but you have to understand that the magic is not just what comes out of your instrument. Yeah. It comes out of your mouth. And on right. your keyboard, in this case. Yeah, and it's so funny because you, you were saying... That you, by the time you were 17, you had all these different opinions. And then probably by the time you were 27, you had had all these other experiences that, that fed into what, you, how you created more opinions about things, you know, yep. about, um, you probably had, at first you were getting opinions about how to teach beginners. And then you were getting opinions about equipment and competitions and how to win them and things yep. like that. And then, and then as you went into the, the world of conservatories and universities, you know, you tried both of those. You tried a conservatory type high school and you could compare those. You could compare that to a high, a regular conventional. Yeah. So much to say about that. I mean, even today I don't play anymore and I have so much to say about that. Right. You, you experienced Manus, which is a conservatory, correct? Yep. And then you also went to universities. So you could compare those and help people. So many people could say, you know, how many people are grappling with that decision? I don't know which one I should do. Yeah. Or whatever, you know, and now you're, you know, you have even more opinions outside yeah. of the music world, but, sure. um, and the, the impact of, of your experiences outside of the music world, bringing that back in is like a whole other, you know, it's just so, it's so mind boggling to think. And then just think about each and every person who has that same thing, their own personal experiences that they've had that have led into their um, own opinions. It's really phenomenal, actually. It is. So. Yeah, it really is. I agree. Yeah. So many good things. Yeah. So this has been great. I'm sure we'll talk more about this as we continue. And I will be starting my public figure page this week. Woohoo. I'm following. All right. Okay. And you're going to start one too, right? I am. I actually, yeah, I am going to start one. Yeah. Okay. We're going to end up talking about things, by the way, our public figure pages. So we're more than crushing classical. You're going to see that. Um, yeah. If you end up following our pages, you'll, you're going to see that we're more than crushing classical. Tracy and I are aligned on a lot of different topics yeah it'll be interesting to see kind of where those go it's great to watch this evolve already i mean it's evolving so fast but also organically and the way that it should and i'm i'm really enjoying it i'm to a place where i'm enjoying it now and i i can talk about why and how (laughs) i've gotten there too because i have opinions about it that's right so it's just it's just great i love it so awesome this has been a great fireside chat today so thank you so much eileen thank you um and if you're enjoying crushing classical please write a review on itunes and join the conversation at facebook.com slash crushing classical instagram at crushing classical and soon to be public figure pages of eileen gordon and tracy friedlander and i'll be yeah and i'll post i'll i'll when i i'm gonna get that set up this weekend and i'm gonna just post to both of them and i'll and so then we can get that started so yeah why not we might as well start let's get going there's no time like the present be the change you want to see in the world (laughs) (laughs) be the change be the 
change. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye guys. Bye.